Good afternoon, everybody. I have some big news for you today. Big news. Are you ready? Okay. My name is Melina Johnson. I teach at Rancho Milpitas Middle School, and I teach English Language Arts and the AVID elective. So what's going to happen is we're going to have some observers come, some researchers are going to come onto campus. The observers are going to record everywhere you go, all day long. Today's lesson is about privacy policies. Um, even as adults, we find that to be a pretty dry topic. So it's a difficult thing to expect kids to do as well. So I think it will be important to put it in the context of, can we find a purpose for our reading? Can we um, find the information that we're specifically looking for? Find the evidence that we need. Three minutes with your group. Talk about it. Think about everything I just said. What's going to happen? What these observers, these researchers are going to do? And I want you to make a list for Mrs. V of all your questions and all your concerns. We're using Common Core Standards, and this has to do with reading for information. It is a skill that we really do need to focus on in, in the middle grades especially. Can we find a purpose for our reading? Can we find the information that we're specifically looking for? Find the evidence that we need. Are we assigned to a person, a specific person? Are we getting to your personal life? Your personal life? The things you want to just keep yeah, to yourself? Yeah. Okay. Let's go around. I want to hear a little bit from each of you. Are they going to do this to every school? Okay, that's a good question. Do you mean like every school in the school district? Yeah. Um, do we have a choice to do this? Do you have a choice? Okay. Do they listen to our conversations? Okay, that was asked in a few places. Do they listen to our conversations? So you have some concerns. Um, you might be glad to know that this actually isn't really happening. Okay. Oh. The best way I think to get the kids engaged is to relate it to their everyday life. Now that you have them, you make that transfer into their virtual world. Well, you have privacy issues here. Why, aren't, why don't you have those same issues when you're online? Um, maybe that's something you need to think about. When you go onto websites, there are ways that they watch you. They track your every move. So if that was making you uncomfortable in real life, do you feel the same way about it happening to you when you're online? It's different from them really watching you than from on the internet. So it's different for you because they can't see your face? Yeah. This is something we run into is that a lot of you, when you're online, you feel like you're anonymous. But a lot of times you're not quite as anonymous as you think you are. There are some words I want to go over. We're going to hear these words a lot in our conversations today. Cookies. Do we all know what cookies are? Yeah. Delicious. And I don't mean the ones that you eat. We're talking about being on the computer. What is a cookie? I think it's like a tracker or something. OK, a tracker. What makes you think that? Because sometimes when you go on the computer, something pops up and it says allow or deny. She said cookies. I thought she meant the one you eat. That's what, that's what I thought. I actually learned that they were little invisible trackers that track where you go on the internet, and then they can like better advertise back to you. The next key term is third party. I wanted the kids to see that these, the key terms that we'd gone over, this new idea for them about cookies, this, this new idea about third party um, advertisers or, or companies, that someone was thinking about that, that those are in the privacy policies. See, here we go, cookies. When you visit Google, they send one or more cookies to your computer. I will break the students up into small groups. I want them to feel like they're not sort of um, stuck with this difficult reading on their own. So what you're looking for is are they collecting identifiable information? Okay, something that's going to make it so you're no longer anonymous. I printed out the privacy policy for a website that I know is fairly popular with the kids um, and it was a little shorter, less complex than a lot of the others because it's designed for kids. I also want you to find out does Tumblr use cookies? If they use cookies do they give that information to a third party? And discuss with your group and decide. Tumblr uses cookies to help identify and track visitors. It asks you for what? Credit card information and um, your, no, your email. They uh, provide the information each time you return to the website. Okay. I haven't seen advertisements on Tumblr, but... Facebook, yeah, on Facebook, Facebook there are a lot, right? There are a lot of third-party links. Yeah. They take you to 
all kinds of things. The kids understand I'm, I'm not telling them, don't go online anymore. It's I want you to be smart about what you do when you are online, and I want you to protect yourself. All right, your time is up. Let's come back together and see what you've come up with. So does Tumblr collect personally identifiable information? Email information. I don't really use privacy on when I go onto the internet, but now that I look at the lesson, I should start. I think it's actually very good that, um, stu that students, children, actually start to learn about these things so they grow to be more responsible. It says your, uh, they collect your email address, the uh, personal and financial uh, information. Okay, good. I think the biggest impact that the lesson had on the kids was the idea that you're being followed online, that somebody is watching where you go and tracking what might be interesting to you. And the kids can see benefits in that, um, but also if they feel uncomfortable with that, they've also now learned that they have choices.